troops from Brussels, overriding national law and national parliaments, overriding the will of nations and collectively the will of the people of the entire European Union. It's a choice between the fact that where we are in terms of that centralised control is not where we're meant to be eventually. We're just moving towards that. To use the phrase, you ain't seen nothing yet if we stay in. So it's a choice between that and so much more. And having laws affecting the people of Britain made within the land of Britain. Oh dear, that's hard, isn't it? Which way shall I go? And, you know, you've only got to look at the usual bloody suspects to see that staying in the European Union is not good for the rest of us. You've got the snake oil salesman, um, David Cameron, the Prime Minister, who's desperate to uh, keep Britain in the EU because he's got himself in a right mess. He um, offered a referendum to try to offset what he saw as the threat at the ballot box from UKIP, the uh, UK Independence Party, which is vehemently anti-EU and wants to come out. And he also felt, um, I'm sure, that he wasn't going to win the last election outright, it would probably end up as another coalition like the one before and the other coalition partner would stop the vote and the referendum he was promising on coming out of the EU. So he thought, well, I've covered all bases there. Uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately for everybody, really, um, he won the election outright and he was stuck with having to uh, fulfil the promise of a referendum to leave the EU. And he is running round like uh, a headless chicken now, trying to um, persuade people to stay in a centralised, bureaucratic, fascist, communist dictatorship in the unfolding. And What's happening is um, there are lies galore. The usual uh, technique when you want people to do something is frighten them to death to make them do what you want them to do. And so you have um, key repeating phrases. Here's a few of them. Leap in the dark. Ooh, leap in the dark. Scary. Um, by coming out. Actually, haven't we been out for most of the history of this country? Um, safe, stronger, better off. Safe or safer. Another version. Strength in numbers. Fear on your own. Ooh. Cost, cost you your job. Oh, you'll lose your job if we come out. Ooh. Yeah, fear, fear, fear. Best of both worlds. We can stay in and be a sovereign nation. What? I had to laugh when, 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 when Scotland was trying to get independence, which I supported, by the way. I think everyone should, should have independence and, and, and autonomy. But to claim that um, Scotland was going to be independent while still inside the European Union was ludicrous. There are no independent nations inside the European Union. That's not what the EU's there for. It's to take away independence, which, of course, it's been doing stage by stage by stage by stage, uh, through what I call the totalitarian tiptoe, ever since it was created. And we have a situation now, where on top of all the fear and on top of all the manipulation, on top of all the lies, we're having a situation that ministers um, in the government who are uh, in favour of coming out, uh, they've been told that the civil service, publicly funded, by the way, civil service, can't help them and can't support them in their campaign to come out. But those ministers that are following the Cameron line and 
um, campaigning to stay in, they can be supported and helped, massively so, by the publicly funded civil service. And this, for campaigns for a public, supposed to be open, independent, referendum. It's all a scam. And you've got the media bias through people like the BBC, and it, it's, it's all um, uh, uh, skewed in favour of the, um, the stay-in campaign. And then you look, like I said, at the people in favour of it. You've got snake oil salesman, Cameron, and Tony Blair. Tony Blair, war criminal. And in fact, snake oil salesman, war criminal for what happened in Libya and Syria. And it's still happening. And then you've got these heads of giant corporations. They're all in favour of staying in. Must be good for them then. And you've got former defence chiefs um, who were helping to orchestrate all these uh, wars and invasions. They want to stay in. And when you look at, at that bunch of characters, not least Blair, Cameron, heads of corporations, etc., if they want it, then it is almost certainly, virtually every time, bad for the rest of us. Which brings me to Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party who are also in favour of staying in. You know, I was pleased when Jeremy Corbyn won the election to be the leader of the opposition Labour Party. Because at least it would trigger some kind of genuine debate on all the austerity um, policies and programs, creating great deprivation in this country by the snake oil salesman government. So I was glad on that alone, but there were many things I disagreed with him on, uh, two, two major things. One, his support for the ludicrous um, fantasy of human-caused global warming and climate change. Even his brother, Piers Corbyn, who's a weather expert, uh, it, it is, has been widely saying for years it's all a load of nonsense. So that was one area that I disagreed with him on. And the other one, fundamentally, was his support for continued membership of the European Union. And it's kind of a, a bit strange, really, to have the people I've just described all of which Jeremy Corbyn would have no time for whatsoever. And yet he's standing shoulder to shoulder with them to try to persuade the British people to um, stay in the European Union. I think that's sad. And I think it's desperately misguided because it betrays a complete lack of understanding of what the EU agenda really is and has always been. Those others, snake oil and war criminal, they know what the agenda is. That's why they're supporting it. And what um, those that are genuine but misguided need to um, appreciate is what the EU is really all about. Since... 20, 25 years now, I've been exposing what it is and what it, it um, was wanting to do and what it has wanted to do has unfolded ever since, step by step. This is the game. We're being taken step by step to a global centralised society based on a world government world central bank controlling all finance, world army imposing the will of the world government. This is what NATO is and the expansion and constantly uh, uh, NATO operating outside its designated area that I said in my books it would do back in the 90s. It's 
all over the bloody place now. And um, a world currency, which would be cashless, no cash. Look around, what's happening in terms of the cashless society? And under this structure, this global structure, are designed to be super states. There's the European Union, obviously, uh, the first one that's, that's really um, a long way along to its goal. They want an American Union. We have the African Union. Uh, they want, they'll have a Middle East Union. They'll have a, a Pacific Union involving Australia, New Zealand. And, and what, they're, what they're all, uh, in terms of the European Union, has done and what the others are in the process of doing is um, being evolved to what the European Union has become, and then some, because it's not stopped yet, from free trade areas. Get them, get them into the, the web by selling them free trade areas, just like the European Union, the European Economic Community, the EEC. It's only about jobs. It's not about political union. When we now know from released documents that the... Um, well, words fail me, Prime Minister of Britain, Ted Heath, um, was giving away sovereignty in the future as a matter of course when he was negotiating British entry. Those um, official documents show that he was uh, uh, agreeing as part of the negotiation to go in to the European Union as it became in the early 1970s to destroy basically Britain's fishing industry, to destroy the mining industry and manufacturing industry to a very, very large extent. And um, all of those things have happened since we came in because they were agreed as part of entry, but the people weren't told, that's all. And so if we look at these um, super state um, structures like the EU the plan within those is to destroy countries to end all sovereignty to end all nations and break these um, unions up into regions the maps are already there some of them have been published and so um the idea is to have a world government dictating to these union superstates and the union superstates dictating to the regions of the superstate with countries uh, gone. And so the idea of the European Union is to get more and more and more power at the centre, which of course it's been doing ever since it was created. And the idea that they are now going to somehow hand back power to Britain as part of this snake oil salesman um, negotiation that he claims to have made is ridiculous. They want more power at the centre, not less. It's all a facade. It's all um, just to persuade enough people to vote to stay in. Phew, got away with it. And... The reason, I've done a, a whole video cast on this, which you can uh, see on my uh, YouTube channel um, or on the, the, the website. Um, and the migration crisis that's happened, where vast, vast numbers of people have been um, allowed into Europe, um, many justifiably so, fleeing from wars, Many, many, many who are doing it to um, to use it as a, 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 an opportunistic way of getting into Europe for their own reasons. This vast influx of migrants has been allowed, not least in places like Germany, by Chancellor Merkel, who is, um, you know, when uh, this hidden cabal says jump, she breaks the Olympic eye jump record. Um, the reason it's been done in such a open the doors and uh, anything goes way is the, the plan is to break 
the sense of national identity among European countries, to break down those cultures. And in doing so, of course, those that are um, coming in and those already there are both min being manipulated to an end by um, this hidden hand, which is playing one off against the other. They want conflict. They want upheaval. It helps them to justify more and more um, police state in positions to meet the, the, the solution to the problem of, of um, upheaval in Europe. Um, but the, the, the reason in relation to what I'm talking about now is to dilute a sense of national culture, which um, makes people more open and less resistant to this European Union um, uh, plan, agenda, to just take away countries, dismantle them and break them up into regions. Like I say, the um, maps uh, already exist. And so if we look at this quote from a guy called Jean Monnet. He's known as the founding father of the European project, the EU. And this is what he wrote in a letter to a friend on April the 30th, 1952. It's that, nearly um, 64 years ago. And he said this, Europe's nations should be guided towards the superstate without their people understanding what is happening. This can be accomplished by successive steps, each disguised as having an economic purpose, uh, but which will eventually and irreversibly lead to federation. They've been manipulating, that's what I call the totalitarian tiptoe, step by step by step by step, ever since the uh, European um, common market was introduced because that was the plan from the start and that's why they're so desperate not to let nations uh, go um, out of the European Union because the idea is to pull more and more in. So anyway I've made my decision not that there was a decision to make uh, I had these t-shirts uh, made um, which you get one on the website if you like uh, because the more that we can um, get this information out about the real agenda of the European Union and what's really happening um, the better chance we have of um, of shocking the establishment and getting out of this straight jacket fascist communist bureaucratic centralized super state and what I suggest the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn think on is whether a European Union run by dark suit fat cat uh, bureaucrats in league with dark suit fat cat uh, heads of giant corporations in league with um, manipulating cabals that actually run the European Union, whether they actually will have any care whatsoever about the people that the Labour Party is supposed to represent. They're the target of these people. Why do you think austerity is everywhere? And you think the European Union is a way out of it? It's a way further into it. Because that's what it's meant to be. Wake up, Labour Party. Wake up, Jeremy Corbyn. See what's going on, what the real agenda is. And then you might realise how misguided, misguided beyond belief it is for you to be supporting staying in this horrific exercise. Because what they're doing now and what they will do right the way through to this referendum on what, June the 23rd, 
is they'll try to frighten you and frighten you and frighten you, not least economically, all your jobs and all that stuff. This is not, this is not at its core about economics. It's about freedom. It's about self-respect. It's about the, the freedom for people within a country to decide what happens in that country, to have laws decided in that country country that affect that country so that there is at least some sort of accountability accountability with the bureaucrats in brussels are you having a laugh it's about the self-respect of not having some arrogant fat cat dark suit dictating your life from far away according to an agenda that ain't good for any of us. That's what this referendum's about. They'll try to frighten you about this, frighten you about that. But that's the core. It's about freedom and it's about self-respect. And the British people have the choice now. Are they going to grasp that? Or are they going to run away? Oh, no, we better stay in. I don't like it, but better stay in because they've said this will happen. Yeah, and who are they? The people who will benefit from staying in. If we don't vote to get out of this, now the opportunity's there. Those that vote to stay in, they deserve to stay in so they can see what a ludicrous decision they made in the face of the evidence. Out. Freedom. Self-respect. Give the establishment a shock that it didn't think was coming. 